Good morning, Victory's Vision Christian Church. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. And we have a visitor. We have our friend Kevin visiting us, and we're so glad he's here joining with us. Shout out, Kevin. Glory to God. <laughs> he always loves to say glory to God, and I love to hear it. This is going to be a great teaching. Uh, it's There comes a time when you have to call on Father God for help. And uh, the name of the talk or the name of the teaching is, is it time to reach out to your Father God? Is it time? And so um, is it time in your life to reach out to him? Yes, it is. And, uh, and every day, so he can encourage you, lift you up, and the Holy Spirit within you, if you're feeding him, the gospel, if you're feeding him, who you are now in Christ. Because the old man passes away when you get saved. All things become new. Most Christians don't even know that scripture. And so they just carry on in their life as uh, the old creation or the old man, the Bible says. But in order to walk, speak, and think and talk as the new creation, you have to renew your mind to the true knowledge of the new man. And there's no better place than the um, Victory's Vision on YouTube, over 200 teachings, so you can find out who you are in Christ. It's Father's Day. I had a great father, not without his mistakes and faults, but he was an inspiration to me because the man was crazy for God. And every night, uh, he knelt at the foot of his bed and prayed for all of us. He loved to pray, and I'm grateful for it because he had it hard in his marriage, but he constantly trusted the Lord like he did in World War II and came home. And then the other father, well, Father God, I love with all my heart, just like my dad. And the other father I want to celebrate is Pastor John. He's a great great dad. We have three kids Morning. and three grandchildren. And he, um, I married someone just like my dad who loves the Lord deeply. And because of that, our marriage has sustained some very big blows. And we came out victorious. The other father is, is um, the gentleman visiting us, Kevin, old friend, known him since the 80s and an inspiration also as a father, because he's been through it. And, uh, you know, the enemy is always trying to kill, steal, and destroy. And, uh, and those that keep on standing, keep loving the Lord, keep loving the word, there's, those are the ones that make it. Unfortunately, as Christians, a lot of times, we forget to look at that. We look at, oh, look what they're going through. Look what happened in their life. And we get so judgmental and critical instead of saying they're upright and they made it through all those afflictions that the enemy tried to use to destroy them. We don't look at that. We don't look at the fact that uh, we look at material things, things in the natural to judge them. And they're great uh, men of God who love to pray and because of them their children make it through things and their children they're a great example Pastor John are you ready yeah, I'm ready. give the teaching Hang in here don't run away with this go to our website um, victoriesvision.org over 200 teachings and if we blessed you spiritually please bless us monetarily we are trying to get in more countries we are boosting, which they charge us for, um, these teachings for around the world. And, um, and also uh, all the teachings on there. Listen to one a day, if you're, especially if you're struggling. Sure. <laughs> you need that word. And we have an email. You can email us any prayer request. We pray on Tuesdays and Fridays. Where we live, we sing. Do some spiritual warfare. That's right. And a lot of Christians don't know how important that is. Very important. Mainly for this country. That's why we're standing. That's why we do spiritual warfare. But all the families, too, that represent the churches that we know. So, If Pastor, we know you, you've been prayed for. Yes. You're being prayed for. Amen. Amen. So you want to yeah. pray? Father, in Jesus' name, I pray right now that you use me, give me the words to say, 
open people's hearts that they can receive what you want to say. In Jesus' name, we receive it. Thank you so much, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Enjoy and remember, don't be just a hearer of the word, but be a doer. 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 Amen. Amen. Welcome to Victory's Vision Christian Church. We use these glasses as our logo. God gave me these, what, 30-some years ago, and he said that, John, you need to see the cross and see the blood at all times. Quit looking at yourself. See the cross. See the blood. You are born again. You're a brand new creation in Christ, and I had to do that, and I did it. Today's talk is a time to reach out to your Father God. We have a lot of problems in life. A lot of people do. All of us do. We run into things here, things there. God wants to be your father. He wants to make it a father in his family for the whole church. So reach out to your father, God. He wants to help you. He sent Jesus to the cross to pay the price for you that you would have life and have it in abundance. Praise God. Do you know God as your father? That's the biggest question we all got to ask. Do you know God as your father? There's a huge difference about knowing about God versus knowing God as your father. You can believe all you want that there is a true God. That's wonderful. But even demons know this and tremble with fear before him. Yet they are unchanged. They remain demons. James 2.19 in the Passion Translation. Look at this gal. She's wondering, is God my father? Is God my father? Yes, he is. If you believe Jesus True change in life, for the better, comes from knowing God intimately as your Father. Let me say that again. True change in life, for the better, comes from knowing God as your Father. Our personality and character is acquired and affected by the ones that we dress and hang around with. Mm -hmm. That we choose to hang around with, our closest to. Do not be deceived and misled. Evil companionships, evil companionships, Communion, associated, corrupt, and depraved, good manners and morals and character. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Mm -hmm. This is out of the Amplified Classic Bible. Who you hang around with is going to affect your personality. It's going to affect your character. If they're bad people, wicked people, you're going to come out to be just like them. Don't hang around with them. Have a relationship with the godly people, the ones that have a father, God, as their father. Hang around with God as your father. That's the best thing to do. What is the Bible view of the purpose of a father? To lead, to guide, to instruct, to discipline, to love his children. That's what God the Father does. He leads you through the Holy Spirit. He guides us. He instructs us. He disciplines us. And he loves us. Unconditional love. Wonderful thing. What are the instructions of life? Listen to me closely. What are the instructions of life from God, the Father of life? My son, this is Proverbs 4, 20 through 27. It says, this is out of the Amplified. My son, attend to my words. Attend, you attend to my words. Consent, consent and submit to my sayings. Let them, let them not be, let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. For they are life to those that find them. Healing and health to all, to all their flesh. Healing and health. Keep them, guard them, hear them with all. See that keep and guard your heart with all vigilance. vigilance and above all, guard, guard that heart. For out of it springs the life springs of life. But stay away, put away from your, you false and dishonest speech and willful and contrary huh? talk. Willful and contrary talk. Put it all away from you. Let your eyes look right on with a fixed purpose and let your gaze be straight above you, straight before you. Consider well the path of your feet and let all your ways be established and ordered aright. Turn not aside to the right nor to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Evil is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil which is legalism, which is the religion trying to be good enough that you can't do. Turn away from that and look to the faith and love of God Almighty. The more you look that God loves you, Almighty, uh, that Almighty God loves you because of what Jesus did for you. 
He took your pain. He took your punishments. He took everything in His body on the cross. And He wants you to be a brand new creation. Born again of the Spirit. Born again of the Spirit. The old man, you, is dead. How dead? 100% dead. You need to see how that 100% will affect you. That's right. Listen to me closely. This is in the Our Father prayer. A lot of times we don't even catch this. We don't even see this. In Our Father prayer, Jesus is showing us he gave, the disciples asked Jesus, how should we pray? And he gave them this prayer. But a lot of people, they never look into it. What, what, what does that mean? In the Our Father prayer, Jesus is showing us God's plan for his children. After this manner, therefore pray ye, he said. This is out of the King James. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forget not. Forget not, forget not, forget not, forgive us, forgive us our debts as we forgive those who are debtors who are sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here's another from the Passion Translation Bible. It explains it a little further. Pay attention to the, to the pink things I, I have here. This one says, Our Father, dwelling in heavenly realm, is a spirit, is a spirit, and he's perfect. Mm -hmm. May the glory of your name, God, be the center of which our lives turn. There is power in the name, and he has given us his name to use. Think about that. We, it's like the power of attorney. We have the name of God, Jesus Christ. Jesus, we have that holy name to use. Mm -hmm. Manifest your kingdom, God. Manifest that realm. Cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth just as it is fulfilled in heaven. God wants us to live by the spiritual laws on this earth. Let me say that again. God wants us to live by spiritual laws on this earth. We acknowledge you as our provider of all we need each day. Uh -huh. A perfect father will take care of all the needs of his children. Isn't that good? Think about this. Forgive us the wrongs we have done as we ourselves release forgiveness to those who had wronged us. Mm, some people have a very hard time letting that go, don't they? I'm not going to mention no names here because you know who you are. It's time to let it go. Mm -hmm. Time to let it go. Forgive us our wrongs as we have ourselves release forgiveness to those who have wronged us. We forgive as we believe in our forgiveness. Rescue us every time we face tribulation and set us free from that evil. Evil, evil is the law of sin and death, the flesh mind. For you are the king who rules with power and glory forever. Amen. All things are possible with God in our, when God is our father. Matthew 6, 9 through 13, the Lord's Prayer. Do you ever see it that way? That's the way we should see it. That God is there for us. He wants the best for us. We are sons and heirs of God. We are sons and heirs of our Father God Almighty. You're an heir. What is an heir? Amen. Think about what is an heir. Mm -hmm. An heir is someone who uh, inherits something from them. We are heirs of God. Jesus got that airship back that Adam had given away. If you can say airship. <laughs> He's got it back for us. And what happens, huh? We're to walk in it. We're to live in it. We're to see what we have. Jesus said, I came to give you life and give it to you abundantly. It's the thief that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Not God. Too many people think God is coming to kill, steal, and destroy and punish them and do all kinds of things. No. He sent God. God sent the Father sent the Son, Jesus, to pay the price for us so he, he could take our guilt away, take our condemnation away, take our fear away. And God wants to show that He is a good Father. Let me show you the implications of this, being an heir. As long as the heir is a minor, he lives, he has no advantage over being over a slave. Though legally he owns the entire inheritance, he is subject to tutors and administrators until the very date that the father has set for emancipation from that slavery. That is the way it is with us. 
When we were minors, we were just like slaves, ordered around by simple instructions. The tutors and the administrators of this world. Mm -hmm. Who's, who was that, huh? The tutors and administrators of this world. The religious or the devil. We were just like slaves. Slaves to who? The devil. True. With no say in the conduct of our lives. But when the time came... When a time arrived that was set by God the Father, God sent His Son, born among us of woman, born under the conditions of the law, so that He might redeem us, redeem us, those of us who have been kidnapped by the law. Kidnapped by the law. Jesus is going to redeem us. And if you know Him, you've been redeemed. Everybody say, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. Amen. That's my crowd here. Thus, we have been set free to experience our rightful heritage. You can tell for sure that you are now fully adopted as his own children because God set the spirit of his son into Jesus crying out into our lives also because we're one with Jesus. Crying out, Papa, Father. We have Father God as our Papa, Father, Abba, Father. Doesn't that privilege of intimate Conversation with God, make it plain that you are not a slave, but a child. Mm -hmm. And if you are a child of God, you are also an heir with complete access to his inheritance. Jesus said, all things have been given to me. If you believe Jesus is your Lord and Savior, if you believe he was raised from the dead for you, if you believe that all your sins, all your faults and all your mistakes were in his body on the cross, that he died, his body died went into the grave. That means your body died. You associate the cross, the death and burial of Jesus as your death and burial. That's what Romans 6 is all about. Romans 7 is all about the same thing. Mm -hmm. Reckon yourselves to be dead under sin. How dead? 100% is what God is looking for. That you don't blame yourself, you don't condemn yourself, that you can start looking at the unconditional love of God. When you look at the unconditional love of God, that is going to motivate you. That's going to show you steps to take in your life, where to go, where to not go, what to do. It's the love of God that will control you, not the legalism of the law. can't control you because you won't obey it. You know, it's meant to be good, but we are faith beings. And we see when we miss it here, miss it there, we condemn ourselves. And we're condemning ourselves by faith. That's the root of all sickness and all disease. When you're condemning yourself, you're putting a sentence of judgment on you. Not God. You're doing it. And guess who's leading you to do that? The devil. That's right. Demons. It's a spiritual war out there. And many people don't recognize that because, oh, I don't believe that kind of stuff. I, that's, that's, just, that's just ridicule. That's, just, that's not true. That's fairy tales. Now, let them believe what they want to believe. We're going to believe what we believe. That for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son mm -hmm, at the cross that we may be the righteousness of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. He who knew no sin became sin that we may be the righteousness of God in Christ. You're right before God because of what Jesus did for you. Mm -hmm. Papa, Father, look at that. And you are a child. You're an heir of God. Galatians mm -hmm, chapter 4. One through seven in the Message Bible. What does it mean to inherit? It means to receive money, property, or a title as an heir at the death of a previous holder. Mm -hmm. Jesus held, he held all that because he was the second son of God. The first one actually was Adam. He's called the second Adam in the Bible. What do you think of that? Jesus is called the second Adam. God, listen to me close. If you go to Genesis in the Bible, Genesis 1, read all about it. God gave Adam dominion of this earth, dominion over all the earth. He should have rebuked the devil, shut the devil up, but he didn't. He didn't. He let it go, and we all suffered for it. But Jesus got it back. He got that whole inheritance. What's the inheritance? It's the power of God the love of God, the fellowship of God. Let me show you what else your inheritance comes with when you have a relationship with the Father. Mm -hmm. What is it that we can inherit as a Christian? 
perfect love. You know, some people will say, oh, there's no such thing. God doesn't give you perfect love. Look at the world. It's all messed up. Well, God didn't mess it up. Adam messed it up and the devil messed it up. And man continued in that mess up being associated with the devil. Why? What are you saying, huh? Well, the law of sin and death condemned mankind. Put the curse on the earth through Adam's faith, believing what happened to him at the, there. His DNA changed. His thinking changed. Both Adam and Eve, their thinking changed. Their DNA changed. Everything. What did they start to do? They started to believe this is right. This is wrong. This is right. This is wrong. By what their imagination said, by what the physical everything around them said, oh, and they would put their faith in every time they saw they were wrong, they would put their faith in it. And what happened? The enemy would use that. The enemy, that is the enemy's uh, scepter. A scepter is what a king or someone in authority in olden times would use. The scepter of Jesus' kingdom is what? The law of faith in Christ Jesus, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's God's scepter, the law of faith. That's what God uses. The enemies is the law of sin and death. What does the enemy's scepter use? He got mankind to be under that law. When a king would give out an edict, he would hold up a scepter that says, this is the law, this is the law, and he would bow that. Mm -hmm. This is the law. Perfect love casts out fear. That's part of our inheritance. There is no fear in love. Dread does not exist, but full-grown, complete, perfect love turns fear out of doors, expels every trace of terror, for fear brings with it the thought of punishment. Are you thinking God is punishing you? It's fear then. It's fear doing that to you. Mm -hmm. And so, who is afraid? Mm -hmm. So, he who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love is not yet grown into love's complete perfection. you got to see that when Jesus went to the cross, what he did was taking all your faults, all your, ma all your imaginations against yourself, and he's put it on the cross on Jesus. Mm -hmm. The bad stuff, the evil stuff. He's taken the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is symbolic in the cross, and he was, Jesus was nailed to it. And when Jesus made the comment, it is finished, if you believe that for you, then it, that law is finished in your life. Now you live by faith. Everything you do needs to be done by faith. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing it by faith, you're going back under that without even knowing it. The enemy is going to lie to you. He's going to try to condemn you and use condemnation against you at all times. Fear is done. That is one of the things that is in our inheritance is you have perfect love. What else did we get from God? Well, hope. What is it that we can inherit as a Christian? Hope. What is hope? Well, hope is what faith is based on. Mm -hmm. Things that are hoped for. Hope, his hope does not disappoint. What is hope? What is hope? Hope is the expectation of good. Always expecting good. Jesus said, I came to give you life and give it to you abundantly. He wants you to expect good, not dread, not bad. Too many Christians are worried and fretful because they're expecting the negative. They're expecting dread. Their expectation is not of good. Their imagination is not saying this is going to be good. Their imagination state is, oh, what am I going to do? I hope I'm going to fix it. I don't know how to solve this problem. God does. He always has hope that He has given to us. That's part of what your inheritance is, is hope. His hope does not disappoint. God is not punishing you. God is not sending you into trouble to perfect you. That doesn't perfect you. It condemns you. Why would God want to condemn you when He paid the price already in Christ? Huh? Think about that. Such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us. The hope of God never disappoints never deludes or shames us. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Romans 5, 5. Read it. His hope does not disappoint. It's not against you. It's for you. What is hope? It's an expectation of good in the imagination state. Mm -hmm. 
Hope is the confident expectation that God is going to do what he says he will do. You believe it? I do. Never give up. God's got it. God's got it. What else do we get as a Christian, huh? Sonship. You're a son of God. Male or female, you are a son of God. The benefits of a son. What are the benefits of a son? Well, you're no longer a servant. You're a son, an heir of God. Galatians 4, mm -hmm, 1 through 7. What's an heir? He's entitled, an heir is entitled by law to the estate of another. This is the law that we're under, the law of faith in Christ Jesus. The law, mm -hmm, Romans 8, 1 and 2, what does it say? It says, there is now therefore no condemnation to those who don't walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Set us free. It set us free. Mm -hmm. What's an heir? One entitled by law to the estate of another. Jesus won it back for us. And the Bible says, those that are joined to the Lord are one spirit. You're one spirit with the Lord. God the Father said, one time he said, I will not share my glory with another. But Jesus is the Son. He has the glory of the Father. And now, listen to me closely, we're one spirit with the Lord. So we have the glory of God the Father living on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means the old you is dead. God is not looking at you for your actions. He's looking at you for your faith in Jesus, which will control your actions. It'll give you a new identity. When you have a new identity, the you you see on the inside will be the you you operate and act on the outside. If you're junk thinking, you're under the law, under a religious condemnation, you're going to be against yourself. You're going to be hurt. You're going to want to punish yourself. And when you're punishing yourself, you're going to punish everyone around you. The blame, the judgment is going to be there because you're going to put it off on somebody else instead of you taking it. But Jesus has paid the price for that. Are you going to let him pay the price? He's done it already. Are we going to live in condemnation and judgment against ourselves? When we do that, we say, we say what he did wasn't enough. Are you one that says that? Hmm? Maybe you're saying it out of ignorance because you don't know what the gospel has done for you. That's right. An heir is one who is entitled by law to the estate of another. What is the son? One born of his father with his father's rights and privileges. You're a son in Christ. How about this one? You're free from judgment. Oh, Pastor John, I, I never heard that before. Don't we got to confess our sins all the time that we will be sin? If that's what you're saying, you are stuck under that law because of ignorance about who you are in Christ and under this law. You don't know what you have in Christ. You're not totally dead. You got one foot in grace and one foot in legalism. And you're trying to compromise the two, and they don't work. Just like old wine, new wine doesn't go in old wine skins. How the Bible taught that. What does that mean? You've got a new, a new covenant, a new revelation of who you are in Christ, which really isn't new. That's who God intended man to have and be. Uh-huh. A son. That's who Adam was supposed to be. Jesus is called the second Adam because the first one gave it away. And when the second one got it back, what does that mean? That means you need to let go of that old law because you're not going to be good enough in your natural uh, actions and realms. Why? Because you're a believing person. And when you see you have in your conscience is the voice of that law. When your conscience condemns you, that is your faith on the inside of you working against you. And it's going to drive you away from God more and more and more. Whoa, Pastor Don, are you sure, huh? Freedom from judgment. How about this scripture, Isaiah 54, 17? No weapon. This is Old Testament. God is forewarning them that there's a new covenant coming. No weapon that is formed against you, these, shall prosper. No weapon that is formed against these shall prosper. Every tongue, listen to me, every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you condemn it. That includes your own tongue. That includes your conscience. That includes all about you. 
Listen to me close. When you get condemned, this is Romans 7. Read it clearly. When you get condemned, you're going to do the things you don't want to do. You have a desire to want to do what is right. But when you're condemned, that gets in the way and blocks you from doing what is right and makes you do what is wrong. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? We think that the Ten Commandments, the law, the Mosaic law, all that's put in there, if we just follow that, we'll be okay. No, you're going to be condemned nine out of ten times because you can't be good enough. God's demand is perfection. Well, how can I ever achieve that? You can't. What was God's solution for that? Put it on the cross and let Jesus pay the price in full for it. The soul that sins shall die. When he died, I died. When he died, you died. When he died and was buried, you died and were buried. I was dead and was buried. When he rose, I rose. Born again of the Spirit. The old man is dead. We are a brand new creation in Christ. Mm -hmm. That's how we got to see. When you can see you got a new identity on the inside of you, you're not condemned. You got to purge your conscience. Romans, or excuse me, Hebrews 10.22. Purge your conscience. Purge your conscience from an evil, guilty conscience. Purge it. Let it go. It's also in Hebrews 9. It talks about the conscience. Purge your conscience from dead works that you may serve the living God. Also, Hebrews 10.22. What does it say about the conscience? It says, once you get rid of the evil, guilty conscience, you will wash your whole body with pure water. Oh, what does that mean, Pastor John? That's the message of the gospel. To take away your guilt, your condemnation, to say that you are now one spirit with the Lord, Jesus. According to, Let me say this, because I don't want anybody confused over this, and a lot of people do get confused. What does he say? What does he say? When Jesus was on the cross, or let me back up a second. Philippians. Philippians, it says there in Philippians 2 that Jesus was equal with God, the Father. It's the Trinity. What does that mean? Hmm? He was 100% God, and he's 100% man. God, in the beginning, it says in uh, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God, is God, will always be God. That's me paraphrasing it. God the Father sent His Word. That was what impregnated Mary. It says the Holy Spirit carried it out, overshadowed her. That Word fertilized the egg in her body. 100% spiritual being came into that egg and gave that egg life. So He's 100% God and 100% man. What does that mean? When He's on the cross... On the cross, he's there as a man in our place. He's punished. He's beaten. He's ridiculed. He's forsaken. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's talking about why God doesn't have to forsake us because we're, we're forsake, we were forsaken in Christ as according to the Father saw it. Mm -hmm. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was never forsaken. He was raised from the dead. Uh -huh. He was saying that so we can believe that when Jesus died on the cross, the forsaken, that we need help anytime, will never be forsaken because Jesus was on the cross. And when his body died, that flesh died. The price was paid in full for the sin that was under the first covenant or the sin that was under the law of sin and death or the sin that is under the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He paid it in full. When he died, it's paid in full. The last words he said, it is finished. Then he gave up a spirit. It's done. It's done. Are you going to let it be done in your life? Most people, they don't understand the gospel. They don't. Christians. They think, well... It's kind of like the Old Testament. If I confess my sins, I'm forgiven. Then the next time I sin, I'm, you know, confess them again. And then I confess them again. I sin again. I confess them again. What's the difference between that and the Old Testament? Nothing. Nothing. It could ne In Hebrews 10, read it. It says, it could never make the worshipers, 
the people who are coming to God perfect. Never. No. But when Jesus paid the price and we accepted what he did for us, it's made us perfect, complete in Christ. You, right now, you're looking at what I'm saying. I'm not perfect. I can't be perfect because your conscience is still living alive to that law. That's why you can't say that. No flesh can be perfect before God. God says that. No flesh. But when he says your flesh is dead because you accepted what Jesus did on the cross for you, what does that mean? You're complete in Christ in the spirit, man. You're born again of the spirit. You're a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. That's scripture. I didn't make that up. Mm -hmm. You're free from judgment. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage, inheritance of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Isaiah 54, 17. Their righteousness is of me. What is righteousness? That means you're complete, can stand in the presence of Almighty God without any guilt or condemnation. Whoa, John Pastor John, that's heresy. How can we? So uh, he said he'd never share his glory with anyone. All right, just this is that filthy rags. He's talking about the flesh. When your flesh is dead, huh? Read Romans 7. What does it say? It talks about a woman married to a man by law. She's married. She can't go with somebody else according to law. But when he's dead, she's free from that law. You're free from that law. You're free from that law. How free? Well, it's up to you. What do you believe? The message of the gospel is he who knew no sin became sin, that we may be the righteousness of God in Christ. You're not a sinner saved by grace. You once were, but then you got educated to see who you are and what you have under the law. Mm -hmm. Many don't know how to receive and partake in this inheritance because of no relationship with the Father. Get out of the law, get out of legalism, get out of religious traditions. 2 Corinthians 3, 14 through 17. Be careful what preaching and teaching that you listen to. Be careful. Don't listen to everything that calls itself Christian, because it's not. Be careful what preaching and teaching you listen to. Study to show yourself. Not showing God, to show yourself. This is 2 Timothy 2, 15. What are you going to show yourself? That you're approved unto God because of what Jesus did. Study to show yourself. Show who? Yourself. It doesn't say to show God that you're right, that you're doing good. That's what some people read that as. Study to show yourself. Show who? Yourself. Show what? That you are approved unto God. You are approved. That means you're not a sinner no longer. You're a brand new creation in Christ. You're one spirit with the Lord. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. You're holy, blameless, unaccusable. Hmm? Start reading Colossians. Start reading Galatians. Mm -hmm. It is no, Galatians 2.20, it is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. In the life I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. Mm -hmm. Always wear the God glasses, Victory's Vision glasses. What does that mean? Well, God loves you. God cares about you. Pastor Nancy, come on up. I guess I went a little long, didn't I? Woo! My goodness, Father's Day, this pastor's on fire. Well, it's the love of the Father. Oh, it's so good. You've got, this will go up on YouTube within the next couple of days. It's on Facebook now. And uh, you can listen to it and listen to it again. I guarantee you, I listen to these teachings over and over again because your whatever you were raised in uh, about God, the knowledge you get is filtered through that knowledge. And some of what grandma taught, you bought, or whatever religion you grew up in, is not profitable to you. It's not it's the gospel. It's not the gospel, yes. And so if you, we are here because God has set us free, he has made us victorious in this life, and we want to teach and train you so you can have it too. And so go to our um, website. It'll take you to YouTube, over 200 teachings. Last week is Why the Cross. Now, I've listened to that teaching at least 10 times. It is excellent. You're going to need that knowledge. Uh, I'll tell you, the greatest gift you could get, get your father today 
whether it's your father, whether it's your husband who's a father, stepfathers, uh, mentors, is to sit down, listen to this, and then be a new doer of it. Amen. And so uh, also remember we have PayPal on there that you can give to this ministry. It's a great place to sow your seed. And do you have any prayers for anyone? We have some books. Oh, books, Taken First for Health. It's all on condemnation. People don't realize that condemnation, regrets, humiliation, and we'll shame make you sick. will lower your immune system and the enemy's got you. And uh, so that's a great book. Um, the other one is Emergency Faith. I love it. The it's called first the Red Sea Position. Red Sea Position with Moses standing there and way, yeah, nowhere to go. Front was the Red Sea, back was Pharaoh coming. And you would think the Israelites who saw the 10 plagues and they were delivered out of all of them wouldn't start murmuring against Moses. Oh, they did. They weren't, the only one standing in faith was Moses. And the first, there's five points in there. And if you go to YouTube and you get Red Sea Position, it's a teaching along with that book. Listen to that, it's excellent. First one is take control of your emotions. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Unless you're in a crisis, but you've got to do it in order to stand on God's word. And God gives you the strength to do it. He takes over. Love, Five Dollars of Love, great book for um, gauge couples, married couples, great book for yourself. So uh, we encourage you, $10 a piece, or you can give more to the ministry. And uh, that just covers costs. And we love you, and Pastor, I'm going to pray. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please agree with me right now. Say, Dear God, Dear God. what Pastor John is saying, I want to understand. I want to know. I want to know and understand how I died when Jesus died. How I can become and receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Right now, I take a step of faith and I believe that was done for me. That He died for me and I receive it in Jesus' name. That means you're born again now. This instant, you were just born again. Now, pray this. Say, Dear God, Give me understanding. Holy Spirit, you're the teacher from what I hear. Give me understanding to show me what I have in Christ. Go to our website. It will guide you to that YouTube. And we have over 200 teachings to show you who you are and what you can be in Christ. The greatest thing ever. The it's, greatest. A, it's a great life. Uh, do Amen. things come against you? Yes, you live in this world. But you're not going to fold. You're not going to, the fear is not going to overwhelm your life and take over. You're going to remember these things. Because you hope you'd right. be a son and of a good son. father. Oh, the best father. Happy Amen. Father's let's, Day. Let's, let's close. Let's close. Go ahead, Dal. Father, I just thank you for, for you, for Father God, for a relationship with you. I just thank you, Father, that I have this knowledge and the others out there that are listening, thank you for supporting us and listening to God's word and being a doer of it. We just thank you that you're a good father, that you've given us all things pertaining to life and godliness, and you are for us. And if you are for us, no man can Amen. be against us. And we just thank you, Father, that the word of God, our prayers, the word is in us and increasing. Thank you, Father, for all the fathers out there. Uh, without them, they have such an influence on their children, and I don't think they realize it. But the greatest influence is if they love the Lord, if they love the mother, and, uh, and show God's just victorious living. And we just thank you, Father, for them. Have a great, great Father's Let me say this too. Father's if you've been day. hurt from the mother, from any anybody let it go give it over to the lord god will deal with it god will deal with them but don't suffer in the pains of the past that you have done we've all done bad things and god wants to heal every part of us he's going to rebuild your emotional state and he's going to fill it with the spirit thank you lord and he's going to give us the peace of god amen thanks amen. for listening have a great week